thought this plane is going to crash. It was impossible to believe that it was reality, what we were living. The cold and the hunger. And then it got worse. I'm Oliver Price, and I was the director of the Andy series that we made. So the plane crash that took place in 1972 was in the Andes Mountains, and it was over three and a half thousand meters. You know, it's incredibly hard to recreate the, the barren, sparse, freezing, desolate landscape of the, the Andes. We managed to find a place in the Alps on the border um, of Italy and France um, called Col de Lottere. Um, and we managed to find a place where we could position the camera and behind us there's basically a hotel. Um, and yet all around sort of three sides there were these kind of desolate peaks. And if we kind of cleverly positioned where the camera was, you know, we could frame out any site of trees or hotels or any resemblance of this being actually a very busy area of the Alps where there are all sorts of winter sports taking place. So we were very lucky to, to interview some of the survivors from this incredible story and they gave us these incredible interviews where talking about this amazing event that they've been through and obviously to bring it to life and to do it justice, we wanted to, to do reconstruction that, that felt kind of truthful to what they experienced. So it being a story set in the 70s, um, a lot of archive from that time is in 4 by 3 um, So initially, when we have our actors taking their seats in the plane and having the plane um, journey, we, we kept it in that four by three aspect ratio. One of our survivors said to us this line about emerging from the plane wreckage, looking all around at these mountains. And he said, the whole picture opened up. The picture you are looking at open. And it seemed like a perfect moment for us then to move the aspect ratio and partly as well because we're in the mountains and we we want the viewers to see this incredible location that we're in and really feel that they're in the mountains with our actors telling this incredible survival story across our five days of filming in the mountains we had to cover over 70 days of this survival story which included a plane crash um an avalanche um the, the just day in day out, out survival experience that, that that our people went through and then a trek out of the mountains that um, that kind of ended the story um, and we kind of meticulously tried to plan it um, also because we 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 needed our actors to look like they were sort of weather ravaged survivors in the mountains so we kind of had to do it backwards where we, we shaved their beards as we went along. Um, but the moment we did that, we obviously couldn't go back and refilm it. In the real story, um, when the plane crashed, it split in two and there was a part of the tail that went um, further down the mountain. And then the main area of the fuselage where the survivors spent their time in the mountains. Now we didn't have the money to totally recreate a, a crashed plane. So um, we kind of scoured aviation boneyards here in England and found bits of plane that we thought we could then take to the Alps and cleverly position and film around to give the sense of um, our survivors living 
within this kind of plane crash site. You know, what was incredibly difficult was how are we going to recreate an avalanche? We, we obviously, we didn't have the budget to do some big action set piece. So we did have to kind of ask our actors to essentially bury themselves a bit in the snow as it was going dark. We were trying to time it so we got exactly the right light. Essentially, I had to use my mobile phone light to try and bounce a bit of light off the snow so we could still see what was happening. Let's use this to our advantage because it was a chaotic experience for the survivors. They were huddled together at night time when an avalanche buried them. And if we, we film it in a way where we reflect the sense of chaos and, and the fact that they were in a blind panic, then it, would, it was a way that we were able to kind of film it, but also hopefully reflect what they went through. We had a scene where Fito, who was the first person to, to get up and cut flesh to eat. We had the moment where he went and did this, but rather than focusing on what he was cutting, it felt more interesting to focus on his face and actually the emotion of that moment for him and the difficulty of it and the feelings that he was going through these were frozen bodies they were dealing with so they were only able to cut tiny bits of flesh so we just we tried to reflect kind of both the 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 troubling process for them while also not being too gory we had prosciutto that um we kind of put in the snow and then we kind of created um, a dead body out of just the snow and clothes. We packed kind of jeans um, with snow and it almost had to kind of mold it so that it looked like real legs. You know, this might be one of the last opportunities we get to, to tell this story fully. Um, and we were lucky as well to have three episodes in which we could do it. You know, we could go into it in more depth than, than perhaps previous documentaries. So I really like to think this is one of the most in-depth documentary series has ever been on this topic. Well, you know the end of this story. Every December 22nd, we get together to celebrate, commemorate, and remember the ones who didn't come back. Sixteen guys came out of there. Teamwork, love, trust into the group is what made this group so great. Because this group survived one of the most unsurvivable stories in the history of the human being.